All right, so we're going to show you guys uh, the basic steps for putting in a, a transvenous pacemaker. Uh, so there's a couple of key things that you need to grab uh, from the central line cart out in front of room 25. The first one is you need uh, the five uh, French introducer sheath. Uh, sometimes you'll actually find it in, the, in this uh, kit here, which actually has your electronic pacemaker uh, box. Once you've got that, you also need the actual temporary uh, pacing electrode catheter, which comes in this sheath here. Uh, so if you go ahead and open these up with your patient. Um, one, quick, one quick thing. You don't want to use the nine French cordis because this is only five French and it's going gonna, it's gonna to leak around in the diaphragm. Uh, so don't use one of those. And there's also a uh, pacing swan that has a balloon on it that will help you float it into where you want it if you so choose to use that. All right. So two types of uh, catheters really that you can choose from between these two pieces. Uh, the first one uh, you have here is uh, this uh, five French uh, central venous catheter here uh, without any ports on it. If you're doing this on a patient that you think you're going to need to start pressors on, which is probably most patients that you're going to be doing this procedure on, um, you might want to opt instead to place uh, this 5 French because it has this medication and aspiration port here. Uh, so once you have everything open, you have to do kind of a combination of the two kits. The first step is going to be to load uh, your um, dilator uh, through the diaphragm on the top of here it actually clicks on the place like that on the top of the catheter. Uh, the second thing you're going to need is you're going to need uh, the needle out of this one to actually uh, place your line under ultrasound guidance. And you can just go ahead and take this, this catheter off completely if you're not going to use it. Then all you have to do is load your syringe on the end and then place your either right internal jugular central venous catheter or your left subclavian central venous catheter um, like you normally would using ultrasound or blind technique or however you're going to do it. Um, once you've got your, your catheter um, in, the next step is the guide wire. This can be slightly tricky because as you can see there's that small hole uh, down past this piece of plastic that you have to pass the J wire through. So you need to start by pulling the J wire up uh, just to the edge there and then feeding it uh, directly in. Um, if you have the J-wire fully in like that, then you don't get any resistance and you'll easily be able to feed it through your needle and then you see the J-wire coming out. Uh, once you've got your J-wire in like you would for any central line, you're gonna pull the whole, the whole apparatus out, be left with your J-wire, make your skin nick, and then you're gonna pass your introducer sheath uh, like you would for any uh, cordis insertion. Uh, once you've got that in, um, you can pull both the introducer sh uh, sheath dilator and the guide wire out at the same time in one stroke. And then what you're left with is your uh, five French uh, cordis that's now placed with your aspiration port. Uh, you can suture that in place uh, with, the, with the loop here and then you're ready to go uh, with putting your uh, pacemaker in. Uh, one thing to remember about the pacemaker uh, is this uh, wire has memory. Uh, so if you were putting this in into the right IJ, uh, you, need to, you need to angle it so that the wire can go into the heart. So as you're putting it in, you want it to be facing to the left, the patient's left, so that it can make that, that curve towards the heart. If you're going through the subclavian, it's going to be the exact opposite. You're going to want it towards the right so that you can make that pass into the into the uh, right atrium and down into the right ventricle so the, the catheter can sit there. Um, another thing to think about is these uh, wires have little nicks on them. It's going to be hard to see, I think, on the video, uh, but the double nick here represents 20 centimeters. Uh, this triple nick would be 30, 40, and then a big black one for 50. Uh, most patients, you're probably going to find your uh, pacer to be properly placed and seated in the apex of the right ventricle somewhere between 30 and 50. Uh, so if you get past that, you need to be worried that you might be coiled in the right ventricle, which could be a nidus for clot. 
uh, once you've um, once you've uh, started to, once you've got your sheet loaded and, you, and you're ready to um, uh, uh, insert your, your uh, uh, pacemaker wire, uh, you gotta, you got to first load these ports and this is where your helper is going to come into play. This uh, negative lead here is labeled distal and that's the lead you're going to be hooking up to the V2 port on the EKG machine. Uh, so you've got your EKG set up like you would um, with all the electrodes attacks everything but um, but V2 and you go ahead and um, place these yellow clips on and then you attach the uh, black clip uh, to the, the, the negative lead leaving the positive lead free floating for now then your helper who's not sterile uh, clips this onto the V2 uh, of the EKG and so as your advancing your guide wire down and keeping track of, of how deep you're going you'll see the EKG changes that you're looking for. First you'll see like a, like a CVP reading like the flutter of a CVP as you're in the superior vena cava then once you get into the right atrium you'll see a, a exaggerated P wave uh, and then as you move down to the right ventricle um, you'll uh, start to see like a like exaggerated ventricular spike on your on your live EKG that you're running um, under V2 and then once you get to the apex of the right ventricle and you're actually irritating the wall of the right ventricle you get that STEMI looking injury pattern uh, in V2 and that's where you know you've hit the right spot. At that point you're going to secure your sterile sheath uh, and then it's time to uh, hook it up to your pacemaker. That's a good point. Make sure you remember to put the sterile sheath on on the line before you put it in. Absolutely. Um, once you once you uh, get your, your leather bag here, you've got your uh, pacing unit and you've got your cable. Uh, once, you, once you pull out your, your pacing unit, uh, you have uh, both your atrial and ventricular um, spots up here. You want to plug your uh, wire into the, ventric into the ventricular one. Uh, once that's plugged in, you're going to re remove the lead V2 uh, from your EKG and you're going to plug these yellow clips in. Remember that the distal one is your uh, negative electrode, so you want the distal one to go into the, the negative here, as you can see. It might be clamped out. Yeah. All right. And then the positive in. Clamp them both down on the sides here. Now you're ready to go. On your pacing unit, you turn it on. When it first fires on, you're going to see that the atrial output is set to 10. Since you're not pacing the atrium at all, you want to go ahead and crank that down to zero. And it starts at 10 milliamps uh, with uh, the ventricular output. Up here is where you set your um, pacer uh, beats per minute. Um, so set that to whatever you like based on the indication of your patient and uh, slowly titrate this down watching your monitor until you lose capture. So let's say we titrate it down and somewhere around 1.5 we just lost capture and now the patient's back in their bradycardic rhythm. Go ahead and just move it two clicks up until it recaptures and you're done. You can leave it right there. So after that um, you can adjust your, your capture or your beats per minute as needed in case the patient, uh, patient's condition changes, but that's all you got to do.